Have you ever heard anybody talk about losing a home? I don't make light of that. It's a horrible thing that takes place in people's lives. But do you know they really didn't lose it? It's at the same geographical location, same address. What's happened is it's transferred ownership. Uh, from the time that I was a young person, I remembered hearing people talk about a great end-time wealth transfer that was going to be taking place. As we look at the Bible, we find that there has been a wealth transfer taking place from the beginning of time. We're going to be talking more about it today. My name is Charles Vance. I'm along with Chief Strategist Terry Saka from Cornerstone Asset Metals. Hello, Charles. Glad to be along today. Yeah, that was a, it's an exciting week last week. Yeah. Uh, we really uh, got into that. Uh, there's some amazing things happening you know, as we talk about the wealth transfer from the beginning of time. Uh, and we looked at from the beginning of the Bible uh, all the way through, uh, you know, what has taken place. Uh, and today we're going to talk about uh, the, it goes back to Genesis, uh, which is a 500-year cycle. Uh, it's unique. It's been studied out, but it's a 500-year cycle where the East and the West shifted power. Mm. Very interesting stuff. Yeah, very and, interesting. And, you know, it, it, what we've talked mm. in weeks past with uh, the currency war we're having with China, uh, things that are going on. If you look at Europe, look at the depletion of Europe right now. Look at America, how much we're struggling financially. And it, it's rising exponentially. And yet the East is rising in wealth. Mm -hmm. Very interesting time. And uniquely, that 500 years is now. And that wealth the, or that power transfer <clears throat> is because of who is controlling the world's finances. Yes. Uh, it just simply boils down to what country or what section or what region is actually controlling world finances. There's trying to, there seems to be a, an equalizing of world finances. If people, I'm sure some people are familiar with the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, um, th there seems to be this global um, process that is going on to try to equalize the money around the world. Terry, tell us a little more about that. You know, that. that's interesting. Uh, a friend of mine said he believes we're going to come to parity meaning everyone will kind of be equal to a degree. Mm. Now, I, you know, we all mm. kind of would probably say that's the one world government, and, sure. and, um, and that's logical to you know, come conclude from that. But I don't see how parity is, is going to take place anytime soon because everyone has a stake in the game and they have an angle. Because remember, you know, China has a billion, what, a 1.3 billion people. Their interest is taking care of their people. Don't think for a second they're not. Uh, and so part of this east-west uh, cycle we see coming, it's a massive shift taking place. The west is in a major debt bubble uh, that is bringing down our standard of living. And in America, I'm telling you, you don't know what's really going on over in Europe, Greece, and those other countries. Uh, if they told you the level of, of tragedy to the families, um, you would be depressed. <laughs> so you don't really see it on the news unless you go to alternative news sources. Now, now there, there's a reason for that that is very similar to what's going on in the United States of America right now. I, I saw a program, um, gosh, a few weeks back, a few months back on Greece, how that they had continued to just print money. Yes, just print money sir. and print money. And uh, as if they were going to just keep making play money to pay their debts in a national situation or an international situation where they just pay their debts off because they printed more money. It's obviously backfired on them. Now, what, now see, Greece is now part of the euro. And the euro is a single currency for Europe. So Greece can't print money anymore. Okay. But now they, they did. Now that's very true, and this is why they got in trouble in the past, but they can't. So now what's happening is the sovereignty of these nations is being taken away, and they're going under the rule and law of the European community if they, if they mm. end up being forced to. Otherwise, the European community won't give them money. You see, it's a oh, hostage. Wow. Okay. They're hostages okay. now. Okay. Well, in, in turn, they have to make radical cuts to their, their social programming, uh, retirement systems, uh, heavy, heavy tax increases, and it's forced a tremendous tragedy on the people. And that's just Greece. You have Italy, Spain, Portugal, Ireland. Um, the United States is not far behind. Matter of fact, uh, we're over 100% debt 
to our uh, GDP, gross domestic producing product, now. Now, what, to, to explain that just a little bit, the, the, the GDP. Basically, <clears throat> it's what our nation produces annually. Just as a whole, all manufacturing services right. and what have you. And yet, we, are, <clears throat> we have more debt than we produce as a nation. <clears throat> Wow. We're already yo. We're so, in trouble. So we're constantly in the red. Yeah, well, no, we're more than in the red now. Yes, yeah. we are basically insolvent <clears throat> as a nation now. You know, as they say, which I find highly disturbing, <clears throat> is oh, we well that's just silly because we could just print more money. You know, a few weeks ago we played uh, Alan Greenspan, yeah, saying uh, which was our uh, uh, a former Federal Reserve Bank chairman. Yes. and they asked him the question, "What are we going to do with all these debts?" And he said, "It's not to worry." He said, we'll just print more money. Now, with that said, what do you think happens to the retirement accounts, your savings accounts? As they print one more dollar, bread goes up, clothing goes up, energy costs go up, college savings goes up. College didn't, books didn't cost what they do now, right? Automobiles didn't cost what they do now, right? It continues to increase in price. And they're just so... Oh, but we make, more, we make more money, though. Oh, that's such a silly statement. I know. They say that, too. <laughs> that's, yeah, that, that's, that's what they're saying. I, and I'm playing the advocate I here know, for yeah, a moment. I know, yeah, that's but, funny. I know. Yeah, but uh, that's what people say. But, yeah, but we're making more money. Yeah. But you pointed out, I believe, a couple of weeks ago, how that uh, bread, back when I was a kid, I remember bread at 19 cents a loaf because yeah. I shopped with my mom in the summer. I'd go to the, the grocery stores with mom to beat boredom. Uh, and I remember 19 cents a loaf for bread. How much is bread now? Like? Oh, for the same quality loaf, it's it's three to four dollars. So uh, that's five times times four, four or five. Twenty that's times. Twenty times more yeah. that it costs now. And I would ask the question. That that was back in the uh, mid 60s. So I'd ask the question from the mid 60s. Have we increased in our income? that amount of money mm -hmm. and and the answer is obviously no no not even because close. you know when you look at i know i, I mentioned one time in the 70s uh, people you know plenty of people told me that you could go to college finance it yourself have a car live on your own get out and get a great job now you go to college you're hundreds of thousands or you know, 100,000 in debt you, you 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 can't live on your own you it's hard to buy a car because it's expensive and when you get out there's really not many paying jobs uh, but what, we, what we're talking about here in this cycle shift, uh, what's taking place is uh, our standard of living is going to decrease going forward. It has to. We have 60 trillion unfunded liabilities, just Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, in the next 10 years. Now, there's a contingency on that. That's if we keep making the same money that we're making. Obviously, if we increase our income by a hundred times, our standard of living is going to increase some. You're also, well, right. And so you got two factors but, there. One is going to be inflation. Right. And inflation because means it's prices going to chisel, go higher. It'll chisel away at, at what we have as, yes. as a dollar now. And what those people that are protected in hard assets, uh, tangible hard assets, as the standard of living and the dollar value drops during this cycle shift, um, yes, many people I contend in this country are going to live a standard of living uh, a lot less than they anticipate. But those in hard tangible assets are going to actually have an increase in wealth. Um, unfortunately, Charles, it's a very small percentage of people. I, and I really believe that. And, and, I, and I believe that. I hate to lean in front of you here, but I want to grab this. Uh, I want people to understand this. Because for years I didn't understand. This is a silver dollar, mm -hmm. uh, which is an ounce of silver, which is uh, the time we're taping this is thirty, thirty-one dollars, right. something like that, for right. an ounce. These used to be equal. This is a uh, a one dollar. Uh, this is actually a silver certificate, mm -hmm. which means you could trade this for this. This is a genuine silver certificate. They've recalled these so that they don't have to be obligated right. to this now. Legally, they're not obligated to trade this for this, uh, but in a day they were. Now, what has happened is this has not really increased in value so much as this has decreased in value because this has retained its value. And that's mm -hmm. what people don't understand is when you have a hard tangible asset like land, uh, for instance, you can't go out, dig the land up and throw it in the ocean and it disappears. It's going to be there. Mm -hmm. You do the same thing with a piece of silver. When you buy it, it's liquid. You, and I love this, that, you, that means you could actually use it to spend it on something. Mm -hmm. 
uh, for someone that has any idea of values. You can do the same thing with gold. Mm -hmm. uh, it has the ability to be traded for something because it has tangible value. Yeah, it can keep being traded. I mean, since Moses. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's still going to continue to do that. This, however, the more of these that are printed, this is what happens. It's not that this is going up in value. This is still buying you the same. Actually, we talked about how that this increased in value so much relative to other things that we purchase, like gasoline, mm. that you can buy a whole lot more gasoline with a silver dollar now than you could 10 years ago. Twice as much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and this, you can buy, I think you said a quart. A quart of gas of, of or gas. 10 gallons of gas. Yeah. And this is what has happened. Yes. Uh, they've separated. This has gone up. This has gone down. Right. And it's all relative to what you can purchase with this. That's the issue. That's it's the key. standard of living. Exactly. It's what you can buy. If what and you can paper purchase paper money with it. keeps going down in value. And That's it, what inflation is. Yes. And, and it has because, to keep going down. And it's because they keep printing more of it. And we just heard mm -hmm. weeks past they're going to continue to print. Yes. Our, this current administration has continued to uh, be dedicated to spending more money and printing more money. Uh, they've made it very clear that they want to do that. And it, it's their choice of, uh, you know, they got elected, okay. But I'm just saying we, the people who are paying attention, Jesus said, for those that have ears, let them hear. Listen. 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 <laughs> Terry, your company. Those are perish for a lack of knowledge yeah. if they don't. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Not a lack of resources, not no. a lack of money, not a lack of things that God has created, but a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. He said they are, they, they are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Your company deals in precious metals, and you're a Christian. Everybody works for your company, and I'm almost, I almost reserved to say that because some people use that as a ploy to say, oh, you need to do business with me because I'm righteous. Uh, but I've known you for well over a year. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people call me and say, who is this guy, Terry? Right, doing I know. These TV shows with? I'm like, I'm a nice I, guy. Don't <laughs> worry about it. <laughs> Terry's got a real heart for the Lord. And, and form the company that you form with your entire focus being, I want to educate Christian people to get tangible assets so that they can be set for the wealth transfer that's taking place in the earth. And you, you know, I remember us having a conversation six or eight months ago and you said, you know, Christian folk are not grabbing this like I thought they were going to grab this. No. And it's, nobody's grabbing it like they should be grabbing it. They're not. And I believe it's because we are focused, even as Christians, on the, the system of the world. And the mm -hmm. system of the world is ran by Satan. He's well, the God of the world. The, the news industry... Yeah, focus, absolutely. They focus us on the system of the world. Yes, constantly. they do for reasons. I yeah. want people to get this free packet that you guys offer. Now, yeah, just go to the uh, website, register for information. That's all you got to do. We will send it out to you so you can be this educated, is, so you can make decisions for your family. It is packed full of information. That's I'm good telling stuff. You, yeah. It is packed full of information, and it just educates you. You need to get educated. Uh, do you guys take? You guys actually sell spot silver, spot gold, which means you can we do. You could sell these to people. Yeah, they absolutely. can have them at home if they yeah. want it. Uh, you you do all kinds of things. You transfer uh, IRAs and retirement. We accounts. find a lot of people. Um, we help them. There's a custodian that that, that we help them. Uh, you know, do that with. But yeah, we find a lot of people. They didn't realize. A lot of people don't realize that you can take your IRA, roll it over into a physical precious metals IRA. So your future is not being stored up in paper money that's going down in value. Your future is being stored up in gold and silver that's been there since Moses. So, so, so. you guys just do a lot of things to help people. Yeah prepare for financial security in their future. Protection and preservation for your family. And so you can leave an inheritance for your children's children. The, the because Bible says a good man leaves yes. an inheritance to his children's children. But That's I, your grandkids. You know, Charles, it is so amazing how blinded by the system we are. People think gold and silver is an investment. Uh, financial advisors, Wall Street, this, the ETFs. Be careful of ETFs. They're not backed up by What's physical. That? What is that? Exchange what is traded fund on Wall Street. You can't take delivery. If it hits the fan, you you have paper, you have paper. Physical gold and silver is something like land, a house. It's hard, tangible asset. Yeah. Gold and silver just happens to be more liquid. That's the only right. reason we talk about that, you know, from that perspective. But this 500-year cycle is coming. And it, it's being led by what we call the BRICS nations. And this is information that's out there, but they don't want you to you know, see it clearly. BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, 
China, South Africa, forged agreements to no longer use the U.S. dollar as part of the trade mechanism. Now, what, what does that do to the United States of America? Because well, of that if now? we've printed, you know, put it this way, in the 80s, uh, in 1980, the baby boomers. This is great stuff to understand why. In 1980, the baby boomers were just beginning to make money. Now they're retiring 10,000 every day. Wow. In 1980, we were the world's largest creditor nation. We gave everybody money. We still do tens of billions of dollars. I don't know why. I would be canceling that one. <laughs> but uh, we do. Now, today, we're not the largest creditor. We're the largest debtor nation ever in wow. history. We have more debt now than we than any other nation in history. So those countries actually don't want to trade with us right. because we're so far in debt. We have trillions and trillions of dollars in the system now, and they're not worth as much. Back in the day, people wanted it. I remember in the Army, I was stationed in Germany, and everybody wanted an American dollar. And then I just recently went to London, uh, and I, I had, you know, I was going to use dollars, and I had my wallet thinking everybody wanted American dollars. Do you know in Europe, they don't even want the dollar anymore? Wow. They said, no, we'd rather have the euros. If you go to the Middle East, they do not want the dollars. They want gold. And the Far East, they can care less about the dollar. If we have trillions more in the float that we've printed and nobody wants it anymore, you're in trouble if yeah. you're holding on to the dollars and not something else. So you better be careful, get knowledge, get information on it. But when this transfer takes place, this is just the beginning, the BRICS nations. This is a, a very typical, uh, like a little quick uh, kind of scenario or an example in the Bible. Um, back in uh, time of Babylon, uh, when we're talking about Babylon society last week, of course, this is why I like this. Nebuchadnezzar warns Israel, yeah, here's what I want you to do. Israel's walking away, the Jews were walking away from God. Mm -hmm. And because they're walking away from God, hence the United States, walking away from God as part of in our country, no God doubt. out of our schools, mm -hmm. God running our children, God in our courts and our decisions, right? When Israel, when the Jews walked away from God, Nebuchadnezzar comes in, hammers them, destroys the temple, takes them away into hundreds of years of slavery. Now, why did that happen? because they walked away from God. Well, that was an east to west transfer. Mm. We, the United States, are walking away from God. We can't stop what's going on. All the negotiations you saw, as we showed you last week, produced nothing that's going to stop the bleeding in this country. We have tens of trillions of obligations. If the, if the people don't get protected, you will have a subpar standard of living in the future mm. It's a choice. There, there are too many people that are depending on the United States government. And, yeah. and as long That's, as they're eating and driving and have a place to sleep, it seems like they're complacent about it. Is, am I right? Is that what you're well, finding? Well, that, honestly, that is an ism. Uh, if you study out, even go back to socialism states, um, a lot of people become complacent because the government will provide the basic needs. But I'm telling you... What's that do to you eventually? It, what's, what's it do? What's well, it done in history? It's, it, well, it, besides bringing on onslaught of depression, you're poor. You have, everyone basically will have nothing and except put, the elite. The elite will always mm. have something. So. And it puts people in uh, submission to the government. Uh, good point. When the government can give you something, they can take it away from you. Absolutely. And, that's and then they can control you. Mm -hmm. If they take away your guns, if they take away your liberties in the Constitution... If they control the food. If they control the food, if they control yeah. the money, which they do. And all of that's going all that direction. They're controlling the farmers. Yes, they are. Uh, yes, the, they are. They're controlling... Uh, and I, when I say about farmers, they're controlling the people that do the mass farming for mass foods. They're controlling that. They're doing their best to control guns. Guns are going crazy right now. People are buying them like just they're flying off the racks because people think they're going to take their guns away from them, which takes their liberty away from them. Some people don't care. You know, I've talked to some people, they're like, eh, no, I don't need Go a gun. Go talk to know? people in Cuba, China, Soviet Union block. Go talk to all those that live there. I know plenty. I have friends. I was in the Army when the Berlin Wall fell. I know. I monitored that. Mm -hmm. You talk to those people, and they'll tell you that these isms, you never want to be living in an ism. Socialism, communism, you do not want that. The average American has no idea what those mean. 
So they we just don't know. We need to get ourselves as individuals protected. That's but, basically where and, I come from. And, I think as a church, really, I'd and, like and to the see church, that. Oh, I'd yeah. love to see that happen too. Yeah. I don't think the church in general, personally, I don't, I, you know, I've been in, my dad's been a pastor since 1963. Uh, and I don't see the church in general grabbing a hold of this. Church isn't in unity in any of this. You know, they're, the, the, they're letting our moral decay take place. The scripture says the rich ruleth the poor, mm. and the borrower is servant to the lender. Now that's pretty simple. That means, Terry, if you need to borrow this from me, I'm in control of you. If, if I'm the one supplying this for you, I control you because I can demand it back. It's mine. As long as you're using what is mine and not what is yours, I control you. Yeah. And people don't realize how dangerous this is. We need to become a people. If Listen, if God told us to go, uh, if the first commandment that He gave man besides multiplying and increasing was to control everything that He created, and then the Scripture said it's the rich that ruleth the poor, then it would seem to me like that it would be our responsibility to obtain wealth to the point that we would be in control of what God created. I think if we took control of the dominion products that God left us with, if we, we are in dominion of the earth, the earth, mm -hmm. gas, oil, food, gold, silver, cotton, if Christians were actually fully into these products, we would be, we would be in charge. Right? Absolutely. Would but be. we're not. We're allowing the government to take to Babylon. Take we have allowed yeah. the Babylon society. This 500 year cycle is not something that I'm just making up. This is in place. If you talk to people overseas, which I have, they laugh at us. They say Americans are never, they don't see what's coming. And I'm not talking about something that's 10 years down the road. This is something in the next year to three years, you're going to be shocked when it hits you. And they laugh at us. They say, man, why don't they understand what's getting ready to come? Why are they not doing anything to protect themselves? It's they they call us lazy. It's because they have a car, they have food, uh, they have clothing, entertainment, and they have a house, TV, and entertainment. Computers. Yeah, exactly. And they know we're distracted. When you sure talk to people do. from these other nations, they know. They're like, America, you're going to get hammered. And it means your standard of living is going to be dramatically decreased. Mm -hmm. You can't stop the amount of debt that we have and how that's going to impact us. They can raise all the taxes they want. It won't stop the, the decay of taking place. Yeah, this you, decay is taking place. You, you showed a chart, or we showed a chart uh, a couple of programs ago, the, the increase that they, uh, the tax increase this year for the rich, yeah. the wealthy, it was like here, <laughs> and the, the budget for the country was here. Yes. So, I mean, it didn't even, it wasn't even like a, a drop in the bucket. You know, they talk about saving a trillion over 10 years. We need to save a trillion every year. Oh, yeah, at least. See what I mean? We, so need, to, we need to go back. We, we need to get our debt paid off. But uh, nobody, nobody that I've seen in the last 10 years in government uh, or nobody that's making the laws uh, has come into agreement to lower that. They won't. If you notice this big fight, it produced nothing. But I, I think this is important to say real quick before we, we end on this 500-year cycle. This is very real. The East, if you go out into the East, talk to people who are go to China and do that, they are living beautifully. Now, there's still a lot of poor and oppressed in India and China, but don't think that the wealthy are not living. Oh, yeah. As equestrian and gorgeous lifestyles now in the Middle East developing. They're becoming very wealthy. Uh, and this is taking place, so don't think it's not. And you must get prepared for it, but know that um, it's all about the dollar. The dollar was dominant for a long time, since World War II, really, right? Mm -hmm. So the do dollar, this was the reserve currency of the world. Well, this reserve currency of the world is getting ready to change. Like I said, the BRIC nations are no longer using the dollar as an agreement as a standard of trade. China and Japan have already agreed not to use the dollar as the middle currency for trade. And I'm just saying, if, if everybody, if all of these trillions have been printed, are in circulation, but yet demand for that is dropping and going down and down and down. You have more money, but less demand. The value is going to crash. Absolutely. And I contend this cycle is taking place. Just look at Europe. We're right behind them. And what management they're talking about doing in, in government is nothing to really impact meaningfully. Something's wrong. One side seems to kind of get it but they're not doing anything about it. The other side completely can care less. And so we're really in a, in a big hole here. But all I know, what's coming, when that dollar loses status, 
watch out. And we're going to talk next week. I know we got a few minutes, but I just want to mention, we're going to talk next week about the petrodollar relationship. And people don't understand, but every crude oil, uh, every barrel of crude oil being bought in the world has to be bought with an American dollar. That was an agreement made in the 70s. That's one of the main reasons why America became so wealthy and so fast. Wait until that relationship changes, and we'll talk a little more about that. But this and transfer... That's already starting to shift, isn't it? It's already starting to shift. Yeah. And so people have to be prepared. You need information on how to protect and preserve your assets and know that this cycle is real. Now, granted, hey, listen, America's a great and strong nation. we got the best military in the world. We're not going down without a fight. So this isn't going to be an easy cycle transfer, but if you understood the sovereign wealth investment world and how they're stacked up against the West, the East versus the West, you'll know it's, it's a real thin sheet of ice. And all I'm saying is this is bigger than us, Charles, way bigger than us. We got to get close to God. Mm -hmm. close to our family yeah. and take care of protecting your assets absolutely and preserving what you work a life for because when this thing hits the fan at least you will be protected and i know this wealth transfer charles is coming so we can give and help the lost and the poor it, in our community it is going on now we yes we, it is we have got to position ourselves to be on the receiving end rather than on the losing end Amen. of this wealth transfer yes. that's the key i want you to get this packet terry's company cornerstone asset metals put together a gorgeous packet uh, and uh, the information inside is even better than the package is pretty i mean i'm telling you <laughs> this information is life changing for you you need to get a hold of this and it's free, there's no obligation, it's very easy to access. You can either call that toll-free number that's on your screen or you can go to their website, uh, Cornerstone Asset Metals. Uh, is that, the, what's the website? I'm, yeah, I'm, Cornerstone yeah, Asset Cornerstone Metals, Asset even ChristianSilverGold.com, yeah. you know, but, and, and get the information, be informed and know this is warfare to a degree in spiritual context. You know, we bind Beelzebub, the power of the prince of the air. Yeah. We bind him in this community. We bind him over this program, and mm -hmm. we command that the, the eyes be opened, the ears be opened of the people of the, of the Christian community. We loose the knowledge. We loose the favor into your life. We loose the health, the wisdom, the peace, and the love into your life, and let's get back into unity before this cycle takes place. Amen. Hey, get, let's get scriptural. Let's get back to what God has told us to do. Uh, I just encourage you to tell somebody about the program. We're on at the same time every week right here on this station. Uh, if you can't get, uh, if you know somebody can't get this program, uh, we'll send a copy. DVD yeah, copy. That, you'll send a DVD. Why not? Oh, sure. how nice! Don't <laughs> tell somebody about the program. We'll see you next week right here on the wealth transfer. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs>